So previously we got our frame and our swing arm and the other little chassis piece here painted. Forks are over there on the bench behind the quad. Uh, and since then I've just taken the fork sliders in the house and given them a good cleaning inside. So I'm going to see if we can see down inside this now. It looks, looks pretty good now. It was completely black and full of goo. Let's see if we can get a good view down in here. Uh, not really. Anyway, they're, uh, they're nice and clean inside. So what I'm going to do today is I know previously I mentioned sandblasting these, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet sand these through 320, 600, 1000, 1500, and then maybe another finer grade again, and then I'm going to polish them. I think doing that is going to be, I guess, it might be a little more time intense, but I think I'll end up with a better result. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these couple stickers off, give them one final clean up, just with a couple squirts of brake clean and a rag, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and get our sandpaper and start sanding these down. So I've got my stuff set up for sanding. And the way I'm going to do this is we're going to start with 320. From 320, we're going to go up to 600. From 600, we're going to go to 1,000. And then the last step from 1,000, we'll go up to 2,000. And by then, we should see little or no scratches left in our forks. At that point, I'll get my, uh, my polishing hardware out that I attached to my drill. I've got some mother's polish there. We'll go ahead and polish these up. But for now, I'll just show you a quick before. Because I'm not going to get you guys to follow along this whole process because this is going to take uh, quite some time. I'm probably looking at a couple hours worth of sanding and polishing right now. But you can see these are pitted up. Usually when these come out of the factory, they put like a lacquer or a clear coat on them. And that's what goes. So the sanding will get rid of that. And then progressive stages of sanding will make them nice and shiny and then the final polish to bring them up to a nice shine uh, and then going forward what I'll do is when I wash the bike I'll just protect these with a bit of uh, jet seal or a bit of carnauba wax or something like that so without further ado I'm gonna go ahead and remove these drain plug bolts before I start sanding as well. So I'll put that over in the bag on my bench for the uh, fork hardware. Okay, so now we got that sticker scraped off and the goo cleaned off. Let's give you a quick look. So this is what was under the sticker. And you can see that the finish here is still factory. And then this is everything else. So. The goal is when we're done, everything looks like this, maybe even a little nicer, and then uh, we'll be re ready to uh, rebuild the forks. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the 320 wet sand. You guys can follow me along for that, like I said, and then uh, we'll do a bit of fast forward to when I'm ready to polish these. So now just as a quick comparison, and then I'm gonna stop the video for now. So here's the fork and all its pitted and dirty splendor. And here we are just after some 320. You can see the scratch marks in it, and that's gonna happen when you're at your lower grits. And that's why you do progressively finer and finer grits. By the time we get to 2000, we won't be able to see any of these scratch marks. And then when we polish it, it'll get shinier again. So I'll uh, see you guys in a couple hours. So here we are after about 25 30 minutes of sanding at 320. So here's the original. And here's the 
what I'm working on. So you can see there's a nice sheen to it. A couple spots where it's hard to get at, it's not a big deal. We'll get it eventually when we get through with all the other grits. So this is what it's gonna be like cleaned up. You see there's still a lot of spots where there's like pitting in the metal and stuff. That's just stuff you're not gonna get out. But you won't see it once it's all polished up and looking good. So I'm gonna move on now on this one to 600, then 1,000, then 2,000. And maybe I'll wait until then before I bring you back to look at the uh, final polish. So at this point, we're up around 1,000 grit. Not around, we're at 1,000 grit. We just finished doing some 1,000 grit then. So there's still some light marks on it, but not really bad. So now I'm gonna hit this with 2,000 and then we'll come back and have a quick look just before we start polishing. And here's just a quick side by side of left side just after a thousand, the right side's still not done. So you can see they're, uh, they're starting to come together nicely. So we've made it up through 2000 grit. You can see it's nice and smooth. There's still some swirl on there and whatnot. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this step one polish. It's a mother's Usually for like paint and clear coat polish, but I've used it on other materials before and it's worked out pretty well. There's still grit in the in the uh, polish, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount up this to my drill, and then we'll go with one and then the other. I'll take the stiffer one first, and then we'll move to the softer one, and we'll see what kind of a shine we can get out of this uh, fork slider. One thing I recommend you do when you're using polishes is you give it a good shake. This way you make sure any of the grit that's after settling to the bottom is everywhere in the uh, in the polish. So I'm gonna take this, just put a little blob on here and we'll give it a little uh, go and see how the inside of the fork ends up looking. And just like that, we go from, let me take you out of the old uh, tripod here. We go from this kind of hazy shine to a nice mirror shine. We actually see reflections. You can see the reflection of the sticker on the back of my phone. Right there. Wow. So we're going to go ahead and continue polishing see what we can make these look like. Yeah, so it's starting to look really nice there now. I don't know if the camera's picking up how polished it is starting to get, but yeah, you can see reflections in this thing now. You can see where my fingers are in the reflections here. So it's starting to get nice and shiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one up. Oh, it feels nice and smooth too. So I'm gonna finish this one up and I'm gonna go and do the other one. So now that I've got that one we've been sanding all polished up and looking good, I'm gonna give you a little side-by-side -side comparison. So here is what they were originally like. I still haven't started working on this one yet. And now here alongside it, here's the one I just finished polishing. You can see the reflection of this one here in this one here when I'm moving it around here. So you can see this is nice and polished now. So I'm content with that. It's not 100%. I mean, I could have spent a lot more time sanding and polishing. But, uh, you know, for the purposes of this bike, this is going to be more than good enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and send you guys away again. I'm going to take this one here and make it look like this one here. Now that I've got the fork sliders looking good and shiny, I'm gonna go ahead and take a few minutes just to clean up the springs and the pistons and stuff. And I'm also then going to try some Diet Coke and tin foil on the uh, forks stanchions just to see if I can get the uh, corrosion and the uh, rust and stuff off and make them look a bit better. What is connection? So, a bunch more of that, and then I should be ready to hit the stanchions with a bit of coke and see if we can't get those cleaned up. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do that. So now that I got all the four components cleaned up well, I'm going to go ahead and give this coke on the fork slider thing go so you can see rusty spots and whatnot on the chrome. So I'm just going to soak this bit of paper towel some Diet Coke 
from what I hear, if you use Diet Coke because there's no sugar, it won't get sticky. We're going to be hitting this stuff with the brake cleaner to clean it up right away anyways. So just make it wet with some Diet Coke. Take our tin foil. Get a bit of black, dirty, grungy shit coming off here. So now we see that's actually looking pretty decent now. So I'll just turn it to where there's a bit of rust and crap. Let me see if I can get a better view of this for you. So there's a few spots of rust and stuff. And right here is where I just scrubbed it. And you can see it's nice and clean. I mean, there's still a few little small spots and whatnot on there, but honestly, you're not going to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish them off and I'll show you what it looks like. So now when we look at the fork leg or the stanchion, I guess, uh, you can still see some pitting. And that's going to be expected because in some spots it actually went down through the chrome. But all that rust and stuff that was there, the surface stuff is mostly gone and this is looking pretty good. So if this is on a bike and you're standing four or five feet away from it, let me toss you up for a second. I don't think you're going to notice and it doesn't matter anyways because I just want to make this thing work and if it looks good while we're doing that then that's a bonus. So I'm going to clean the other one up and I'm going to start reassembling these forks. So I've got both the fork stanchions cleaned up on this one you can see, if we'll focus here, there's some heavy pitting. The rust is gone, the pits are still there. Uh, but I think once I get these installed, what I'll do is I'll install it so that that pinning is kind of facing in or back toward the center of the bike. And that way you'll just see a nice finished surface. And then what I'll do after the fact is I'll just hit this with a bit of light oil on my finger and make sure it stays coated so it doesn't corrode. In the meantime, I went ahead and I cleaned out the inside of the stanchions. So now at this point, I'm ready to actually go ahead and get these forks put back together. So the one thing that I was concerned about, or one thing I, was, I wasn't I was sure about, is what kind of oil to use in these, and from what I read in the book, what I read online, you can use a 10 weight, or you can use a Dextron ATF. So I opted to pick up a quart of uh, Dextron ATF, because that stuff is 10 weight as well. So I'm going to use this in my forks. Uh, if you go and buy fork oil, a quart of fork oil, it costs you $28 at the dealership and it's the exact same stuff essentially. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting these put together and we'll test them out. So we've got our forks done, they're looking really good. I was hoping to be able to get at the rear shocks today, but I'm not gonna get the opportunity to do that. Time is uh, running short for me here today. So at this point, I believe all we have left to do to get ourselves a rolling chassis is clean up the rear shocks, 
get the triple tree installed in the frame and I've got a new uh, steering bearing kit there for that. So that's good to go, ready to roll. Uh, and once the forks are on and the shocks are cleaned up, we can get our swing arm on and then we can put our wheels on and just look at what we got for a roller. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.